Let's get into it. The the coaching cycle already, uh, as you as you mentioned, four power five jobs already available at week five in the season. And I think this one kind of caught us by surprise a little bit. We were texting back and forth and got some information a little bit early, but nothing we felt confident enough to pop publicly. But that Paul Chris was going to be on the way out. And this is something that we had kind of heard uh, for the past couple of days. Uh, but Wisconsin makes it official last night. And when you think about that, uh, what is happening here at Wisconsin? As me and you were kind of asking ourselves a question, you look at the job Paul Chris did there, 67 and 26, 43 and 18 in the Big Ten, three Big Ten West titles, two New Year, New Year's Six Bowls victories, two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year, third most wins in program history. I mean, this is just not some impulsive move you make, uh, obviously something that was premeditated. Wisconsin off to a rough start this year, two and three. They lose uh, the home game against Washington State earlier in the year. They get boat raced by Ohio State. And then Brett Bielema coming back to Madison uh, and having a convincing 34 to 10 victory. I think that obviously kind of spelled trouble there for Paul Chris. But it looks like Jim Leonard, defensive coordinator, a guy that played his ball at Wisconsin, former All-American there. He will be the interim head coach. And as of right now, from everything we hear it looks like he's got a pretty good chance to win that job. We'll see how he fares over the next seven weeks or so. But, Drew, a lot going on there, a lot to unpack. But just your initial thoughts on Wisconsin and what direction do they need to go from here? Well, I think if you're a casual, you're kind of scratching your head. You're going, wait, 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 what happened? Like Paul Christ is out. But I think if you pop open the hood and start looking around at the parts, this kind of makes sense. I think the biggest concern with Wisconsin and this Paul Chris tenure or has been the recruiting. It's fallen off for the Badgers here as of late. If you go from 2019 to 2021, the Badgers' average finish when it came to the recruiting rankings was right around 24. Last year, they were in the 40s. Right now, they're in the 50s. And when I look at this group, Cooper, uh, I mean, there's just no difference makers to, teal, to steal a term that you just, uh, just used. I mean, there's no top 247 kids committed. Whereas there's six other Big Ten schools that have top 247 prospects committed. And to me, that's just surprising. I mean, Wisconsin just had five players drafted uh, in the most recent NFL draft. Um, this is a program that thrives on player development. And they've done a good job in the past of you know, finding talent, getting it on campus, and then turning it into uh, someone that can play on Sunday. I also think a big issue with Wisconsin is what's the plan at quarterback here? Uh, let's say Jim does hang around. He needs to bring in someone that's going to revamp that offense because I think that's the biggest, you know, a, another big issue. I mean, the Badgers don't have a quarterback currently committed in the 23 cycle. Um, we know Graham Mertz is there. He's in year four, and it's really just kind of been a, a disappointing performance for a, a former All-American. I mean, he's almost thrown as many interceptions as he has touchdowns. He's got 21 interceptions to 27 touchdowns. So, you know, what is the long-term plan at quarterback once he leaves? And to me, if you're going to promote from within with that defensive coordinator, then he's got to hire the right offensive coordinator. And that's got to be a marriage that's going to work out because, uh, you know, Wisconsin can find themselves in a position where they're just spinning tires if this if they can't get on the same page, head coach, OC, and, and more importantly, figure it out at quarterback. I like Jim Leonard. It, it, to me, I think this is a smart move by Wisconsin doing this when they did it. Paul Christ obviously deserves all the respect in this situation. But uh, you look at Jim Leonard, you kind of look at his coaching history uh, brought to Wisconsin in 2016 uh, by Paul Christ. A year later, he's calling plays on the defensive side of the ball and, and had uh, four top 10 defenses since he's been in Madison. To me, the biggest question is, Drew, what you brought up is kind of the elephant in the room. What's going to be the identity of the program from a recruiting standpoint? And can Jim Leonard get that done? Also, if you're Wisconsin, can you see the the real tangible results of that in Jim Leonard's potential in seven or eight weeks uh, as an interim head coach? To me, that's the biggest question. So uh, I'll leave it there with Jim Leonard. I think he's going to obviously be a guy that Wisconsin uh, is very high on. But, Drew, let's go to our first call here in a segment that I think we have uh, been very fond on. And I think you brought up the points. And for me, the first call 
is pretty simple. And I think it's a name that's been tossed around a lot with a lot of people that have been uh, around the Wisconsin program. But that's Lance Leopold at Kansas, 5-0 and right now, uh, a guy who had a long history at Wisconsin Whitewater, six national championships there. Let me read the resume. Fastest coach in the NCAA to 1,000 wins, 30-17 and in his last four seasons at Buffalo, uh, three consecutive winning seasons um, in, in 20 years. So, um, at Buffalo, excuse me. So, and then you look back at his history. He was a graduate assistant under Barry Alvarez, and we know how influential Barry Alvarez is in that program. So, Lance Leopold certainly going to be the guy that I think his name is going to be highly considered, and it should. To me, it seems like a slam dunk. We're going to talk a little bit about Kansas uh, a little bit later in the show. I would like to see Lance Leopold stay at Kansas, build that program. I think what he's done in such a short amount of time there is extremely difficult to do. And I think he is a program builder. To me, Drew, this just seems like everything about it. you got a Wisconsin native who's obviously spent a lot of time in that state with the connections that he has to the school. I don't know how Wisconsin's going to pass this guy up. I, I agree with you, Cooper. If I had to make a first call, I would call him. I'd also call Brett Bielema. The guy that just came into Madison and uh, sent Paul Chris packing. I mean, the former head coach at Wisconsin. I would at least gauge him, have a conversation. It's probably not going to work out financially. Just kind of final thoughts on, on this Wisconsin job. Um, you know, I think you got to get someone that, uh, you know, can navigate that transfer portal. We've seen Wisconsin be rather selective with that, but I think you're going to need an influx of talent more specifically. So at that quarterback position, like I was hinting at, and, and you know, when you look at the future schedule, uh, Alabama comes to town in 2024 and then Wisconsin travels to Alabama in 2025. So that's two measuring sticks. Uh, for a coach that'll be in year two or year three uh, something so something you also got to take into account uh, with that wisconsin opening i'm a believer in wisconsin I, I i've been to madison when when we were at michigan that is a tough place to play recruits respond well to that place i love the brand of wisconsin to me, Drew, the biggest question is how do you recruit the skilled positions? I think everything you're looking for and everything that we've seen from Wisconsin in terms of player development has been on either side of the line of scrimmage, whether that's offense, defensive line, or front seven players. To me, the biggest question is where do you go to get your skill position talent? I think that's the question that Jim Leonard has to answer, has to answer and that's going to be something – we're going to be keeping an eye on. But a couple other names for Wisconsin uh, that I have my eye on. Dave Aranda from Baylor, obviously uh, a lot of connections to the Wisconsin program. Matt Campbell at Iowa State. He seems to be a name that has been considered for just about every job opening so far. Luke Fickle, I'm going to keep bringing him up until somebody hires him. I think he's going to stay at Cincinnati. He's going to be hard to pluck, but this is another Big Ten job that kind of fits the parameters of what he's looking for. And then you have Matt Rule there as well with the Carolina Panthers. I don't expect him to make it out of this season with Carolina. So I think he's going to be another hot name. And then Dave Doran there in NC State, originally from the Midwest, doing a great job there with the Wolfpack. So a lot of names. I think Wisconsin is going to be in a buyer's market, uh, and I think they're going to be in a good position. So Wisconsin, Madison, we will keep our eyes on that one. But Drew, Colorado, Colorado, like who would have guessed? Got Carl Durrell out after 23 games in Colorado, Mike Sanford, the former Western Kentucky head coach and now the offensive coordinator at Colorado, now been promoted to the interim head coach. And Colorado, Drew, this was kind of a hard one for us to wrap our heads around, even before when they hired Carl Durrell. But they lose on Saturday to Arizona, 43-20. to 20, uh, And that was their closest point differential of the season. Goes to show the state of that program. They haven't had back-to-back -back winning seasons since 04 05 drew i know you kind of brought it up pre-production but how attractive is this job especially with usc ucla the two biggest names in the conference leaving for the big 10 here pretty soon well i've gone back and forth is this an attractive job is it not an attractive job i mean you took it right out of my mouth those two schools leaving for the pac-12 i think it kind of knocks it down a little bit of a tier because you don't know what the future of the pac-12 is uh I, i've seen different takes different theories out there uh, i think colorado is attractive i mean i mean i see them all the time when they're humming that they go into texas and recruit well and they go 
come down here to South Florida and they recruit well. They got a few kids committed out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School. And I also think what people were overlooking is the state of Colorado actually has some good high school football. The issue is the Buffs can't keep any of those kids home. Right now, out of the top 10 uh, ranked kids in that state, Colorado holds a commitment just from one of them. Uh, eight others are committed to other schools, some of them in the Pac-12, and then one's undecided. So I, I think you're going to need some time here it seems like it's going to be a bit of a full rebuild. I mean, they're not a program that has been attracting top two, four, seven talent or, or, you know, guys we would peg as future NFLers. So someone's got to come in with, with a good recruiting base, I think nationally. Uh, and, and one name that stands out to me is a guy right in their backyard, yard, Tra Troy Calhoun uh, over there at air force. But no, this is an interesting one. I just don't know how attractive it is to some of these candidates out there. I think um, if we're talking on the totem pole, they're at, they're at the tail end of it. Uh, Boulder's an attractive spot. Is it? You can have a lot of fun in, in Boulder if, if you're not careful. Uh, listen, they also have really good resources in terms of the program itself and the facilities. I think you can build a winner at Colorado. And, and my first call here would be a guy that we talked about earlier in the show. That's Dave Clawson. I mean, he's been a proven winner just about everywhere he's been, Bowling Green before Wake Forest, before that it was Richmond, and then it was Fordham before that. So you look at what he's done at Wake Forest, it's it's pretty impressive. I want to say uh, five straight uh, bowl appearances at Wake Forest. Now a team that won 11 games last year. You have them in position right now at 4-1. and one. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson and then going into Tallahassee being an undefeated Florida State team. So if you're looking for continuity, if you're looking for um, a, a macro-level roster-building standpoint, a guy that's had a lot of success, I don't know if they can lure a guy like Dave Clawson, but to me that makes a lot of sense. Some other names there, I think Justin Wilcox at Cal, it kind of seems like uh, a, a move for him that why would you make that move? I think the resources at Colorado compared to California make a lot of sense for him to make a move like that. But also some other guys on the West Coast, Troy Taylor at Sacramento State, FCS, Sac State uh, doing a great job. They beat Colorado State, beat the brakes off of Colorado State earlier this year. Jake Dickert at Washington State. Mike Elko at Duke and Kane Womack at Southern Alabama. I think all those guys, we don't talk enough about Mike Elko and the job that he's done at Duke. Four and one right now, just beat Virginia last week. So Blue Devils feeling pretty good, but that's neither here nor there. Colorado, that job, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I think they'll be deliberate in that process. But to me, if I'm a Colorado fan, my last thought on this if I still have the AD and Rick George that hired Carl Durrell, why would I have any confidence in him hiring the next guy? That makes zero sense to me. That felt like a completely complacent hire where they did not do their due diligence. I would be scratching my head and I'd be a little concerned if I was a Colorado fan.